and we can welcome to the stage Libby Von Tonda, who's going to be telling us about, well, it's just brain surgery. Evening. So, yeah, I'm Libby Van Tonder. Uh, I'm a neurosurgeon. I work in Alder Hay, just down the road, and I'm doing research uh, on neurosurgical CSF infections in the University of Liverpool. Uh, so, I thought I'd just talk about brain surgery, uh, make it a little less of a thing. Uh, so, you're a brain surgeon. It's not exactly rocket science, is it? Um, I think we're overly impressed by some of the job titles that people have, so I'm just going to explain what we do. It's not that, well, some of it's complicated, obviously, but what do you think when you think brain surgeon? Uh, probably an old white dude who's a bit serious and very, very knowledgeable, or maybe a very hot American dude who doesn't, I don't know why he has printed x-rays behind him, that seems very old school. Anyway, I'm not uh, either of those, I'm a woman, I'm Irish, and... Uh, Currently, I'm in Liverpool, so it's all, all a bit non-neurosurgical. Um, so I was going to talk about what neurosurgeons do. What do we do? We've been doing it for thousands of years. People have been cracking skulls open for, the, for fun for thousands of years. We've skulls from back in the day where people have drilled holes or made openings and survived. We can see that they healed, so they survived us doing this. But really what we do, we take stuff out. If you hit your head and you bleed inside, we crack open the skull, take out the blood, relieve the pressure, sew you back up again. Um, so, yeah, that's trauma. A uh, big thing that most people think about when you say brain surgeon or neurosurgeon is brain tumours. So that's probably the more complicated bit of our job. Um, but, yeah, we go about, you know, cracking open the skulls, get in at those tumours as well, um, and trying to take them out. The other bit of our job is putting stuff in. Um, so on the right is... <laughs> Our plumbing job. So you can get a build-up of fluid in the brain. Uh, it's hydrocephalus, and we put in a drain. It's a shunt. It's a big chunk of our job, actually. Uh, how do we get in? To be honest, that hasn't changed a lot over the years either. Um, this thing in the middle is not that dissimilar to something I use for brain biopsies, genuinely. Uh, I would love the gold thing. That sounds awesome. But really what we use is quite like your Black & Decker at home, except that it's super fancy and probably a lot more expensive. Um, a drill through the skull. Um, it stops turning once we're through the skull for safety. We're not that clever. <laughs> um, cutting. Also, you don't really want to cut brain. We don't cut brain. We only use the scalpels for the scalp. Um, and then we use electrocautery to heat the tissue and destroy it. And then we suck it up with a sucker. Again, it's not that complicated. What does it feel like? What does a brain feel like? Uh, really like blancmange, <laughs> but warm, and it, and, it, and, and it pulses. It's beautiful. It's quite yellowy as well, because there's a lot of fat insulating the nerves, um, so it looks very different than you think it might look. Our best friends in the hospital are the mole people who live in the dark and look at scans all day. These are the radiologists. Um, we really need these guys because you can't really do phrenology anymore. We need scans to look on the inside. And how do we know where we're going and these deep structures? We need sat-nav for the brain. So we register from the MRI or the CT and then we use heads up real time in surgery displays to tell us where we are. Our eyes aren't that good. We need stuff to look at the tiny little structures that we're getting down to. So microscopes, we're quite lazy. You can see that surgeon sitting down while he operates. Um, in fairness, you're probably operating for six or seven hours, so you want to sit down. We do use robots. We're not that precise. Robots are a lot more precise. Why not use a robot? Uh, unfortunately, they don't look super cool and retro. It's a bit more boring, and they don't talk to you. Um, the pink drink. Um, I don't know if anybody's heard of the pink drink. This thing is cool. You take it, and it makes your tumor glow pink when we change the light filter and so that we can uh, get as much of the tumour out as possible. Uh, that bit is cool. But really we don't work alone, though I'm sure some neurosurgeons with their egos would go on about how godly they are. We work with a lot of people <laughs> and we can't do our job without our nurses, without the speech and language, without physio. It's just brain surgery. 
if Monty Byrne can do it, anyone can. <laughs> um, and I genuinely think as a career option, I could go into some sort of veterinary because pets do get hydrocephalus and they may need a neurosurgeon in the future. Um, and to end, I'd just like to say it's not a brain tumor. If you have a headache, it's probably not a brain tumor. Please calm down. Um, <laughs> I always feel worried about talking about neurosurgery because you're like telling people all the weird and wonderful things we can go wrong. It's not a brain tumor. Baby, I'll try.